So this message is called Compassion for the Kukuracha. What is that? Well, uh, you can look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> now, um, Kukuracha has been one of the strange and greatest fears I've had growing up. In uh, Taiwan, where I grew up, uh, cockroaches, as they're also called, um, were big. And uh, back then, there were a lot of them. Uh, you know, when I visited Taiwan a couple years ago, um, I didn't, I barely saw any. So I guess sanitation or something changed. But back when I was growing up, there were a lot of them uh, everywhere. And um, they, many of them flew. So it was very, um, any you know, they're, they're, they're big, they're, they're, they're like, you know, you can see them on, on walls and they're like really fast and they're, they're just really frightening to look at. Um, and especially when they fly towards you, <laughs> even more. Anyway, I don't want to traumatize anybody here because probably a lot of us are, are not fond of uh, what, what the Floridians cleverly call palmetto bugs. It's a nice branding. That sounds so nice. Oh, I don't know what a palmetto. Oh, that's a palmetto. Okay. Uh, but cockroaches, roaches um, are, are uh, feared by many people, including myself. And I have begun to change my perception of them. How and why? Well, probably by necessity, because now that I've moved to Mexico, I am now again seeing more of them than ever before uh, where I was in the United States or in California you know, very dry dry climate not not as many but here there are uh, they're they're quite common and I of course I said well now I have to live with them in a sense um, I, I I try to of course you know when we first got here we we try to kill them all and uh, get the what do you call it, the um, pest control people here, spray everything down. We did it, we've done it uh, twice now. Um, and yet, of course, after a couple weeks, after a few months, um, nature is very resilient and they, they come back. And so the long-term solution is not to keep spraying. I mean, yeah, we might still do it every once in a while, but it's the long-term solution I think is to relate to them differently so that there's hopefully less fear, hopefully a lot less fear. And so what's, what's to replace fear? Um, neutrality is, is good. It's helpful. Um, uh, but somehow I don't know how this started, but I, I started to feel compassion towards them. I, I think part of it is because I, I see a lot more bugs here than I did in California and bugs inside the house too. And I, I've always tried to rescue bugs, bring them outside. And, uh, you know, I, I, I like doing that cause I don't like to kill things if I don't have to. And so I rescue everything from big to small. I rescue them, put them outside. And I said, well, why not with the cucuracha? Is there, sure. They're, they're my childhood fear. Um, like, I don't mind spiders, actually. You know, I don't mind other things, but cucurachas, you know. Anyway, so I, you know, one day, I mean, especially after we have sprayed, right, um, the pest, pesticides, uh, they, um, we see them dead or, or weak and they're dying. And in fact, um, when uh, the second time we had sprayed, we actually saw one that had just consumed the poison and was like writhing in pain, essentially, as far as I could tell. I mean, I don't know if they feel pain or not, but they were, it was writhing. It was acting in a very compromised way. Like it was, it was like it was in pain and, and dying. And that made me feel compassion towards it. I thought, gosh, I don't, don't do unto others what you wouldn't done unto you. And I just, I saw it and, and the, and the pest control people call it their, the cucuracha break dance. Cause it was like, it was almost like it was dancing. It was, it was, but it was dancing in place. It was because it was, um, it was unable to run away and it was unable to function normally. And I just thought, yeah, I don't, 
I mean, breakdance is usually done by human beings, obviously. And um, it, it, just to analogize it to that, it's like, oh, it is a being. It is a I don't, probably conscious being or that has some kind of collective consciousness. And it's, it's not uh, operating. It's not being the way that it wants to be, you know. And anyway, so the compassion kind of maybe began there. And seeing them kind of not dying and weak, because usually by the time it comes into the house, it's already weaker and like on the verge of death. And then the other the other day, I, w I opened the door and one scurried in, and um, I'm like, oh, I was surprised. And I was at first there was a bit of fear, but then it scurried in, and it wasn't as fast as it, I remember them being. It was it was like it was running for its life, literally, right? And then it was so interesting because I was trying to catch it. And then it went hid behind one of the, it hid behind the leg of a chair. It was so funny because it was like in plain sight. It was hiding behind the leg of a chair. And I could still see the, you know, whatever it's, it's um, things uh, moving around. Like it was very scared. And I was, I was kind of amused by it, actually. I was like, you think I can't see you? You're hiding behind the leg of a chair. I could see you. But it was, you know, the leg of the chair was darker, it was casting a shadow. So I just thought, my God, it's so, it, it, it made me feel like it's an animal. It, it has animal instinct. It's an animal. That's, that's suddenly the thought came, that's an animal. I wouldn't, I wouldn't kill an animal. I would try to rescue it and rehabilitate it, you know, send it out into the wild. So why not this one? And so I, I, I did. I, I, you know, I, in the moment, I somehow overcame my fear. I took a broom and thing, and, and I swept, swept it, and I kept moving the, the thing around because it kept trying to escape, and it kept moving around, so it kept staying in, in there. And then I went outside and dropped it off in, in, you know, into the street, and it ran away. And, um, and then the other day, I saw a smaller one in my bathroom, and I tried to catch it again, and I couldn't, and it went underneath the bathroom counter, you know, some space, and it was trying very hard to go. I could see it struggling to try, and then finally it was able to before I could catch it. And again, it was like, it's scared. It's trying to, and, it, and it's trying to hide away. It's not trying to intimidate me or, or, or kill me. I mean, it's not, it's not harmful by itself. Sure, it's probably dirty, spreads, you know, germs or whatever, but it's not, it's trying to, to hide and trying to sustain itself. Anyway, so... <laughs> I'm gonna. I'll stop here. We don't need to talk so so long about this topic, but I just wanted to share with you this, the beginning of this transformation for me. That hopefully, because I know I'm gonna see it again, and I hope I can swap the fear for the compassion again, and try to practice that as part of a spiritual practice. So, anyway, if this serves you in some way, I I, I hope it does. And uh, thank you so much for watching.